Alright, Charlie out there champs. Now, today we're going to see how this awesome Aero 15X video edits. Now, I've sort of been a little bit selfish here because, you know, I really want to know how it video edits. That's the most important thing to me. So I wanted to do that first. I'm going to show you some render times. And if you don't know the specs of this, is it has an Intel 8th generation 8750H processor which is a six core processor, 45 watt part, and a GTX 1070 Max-Q. That has eight gigabytes of video memory. I'm gonna tell you the render times compared to the previous generation sort of laptops very shortly. And because this is such a beast and actually just chews through 4K content, I'm gonna actually have to try some 8K content, you know, just to actually test it out. Because 4K, it just laughs at 4K to be honest. Now this only has one memory stick, so performance can can actually be better if you put two memory sticks in there. It has one 16 gigabyte RAM and it has another slot three. So that means it's running in single channel mode. So it's half the memory bandwidth that it's capable of having if you have two sticks of RAM the same size. So performance can actually get better if you have dual channel memory running in there. Now what makes this great for gaming? obviously makes it great for video editing in terms of power having those hardware specs but also what's important when you're video editing is the display how color accurate it is now there's a difference between color accuracy and color gamut color gamut just means the amount of colors the display can display how wide the color gamut is if it's wider it can display more colors color accuracy is different color accuracy means just like if you have an apple and you take a photo of it does the photo of the apple on this display look like the actual real apple and actually monitors with really rubbish color gamuts like small color gamuts can actually be very color accurate so i don't want people to get mixed up between color accuracy and color gamut for what it's worth i measured the color gamut on this and yes it is indeed 100 percent srgb or near enough and it's a tad over 300 nits of brightness there so it's plenty bright 100 percent srgb and color accuracy is bang on like seriously cannot tell the difference between the calibrated version and how this comes out of the factory everything looks right because this after all is certified calibrated by x right pantone it is very color accurate and it's most certainly is it's one of the most color accurate displays i've ever seen now this is the full hd version 144 hertz they do have a 4k version as well and that display for content creation is even better because it has a wider color gamut it's 100 percent adobe rgb it's 4k so things get crisper you can look at your 4k content and also it is calibrated by x right so it's got the color accuracy and the wide color gamut which is like a content creator's dream so could you use this for content creation 144 hertz one yeah 100 percent it's fantastic for content creation color accurate and you get the bonus of being able to gain better it just has better tracking because it's a smoother display but me personally if i was content creation first i would go to 4k because of the extra sharpness of the 4k the wider color gamut of 100 percent adobe rgb and the fact that i can watch my 4k content one-to-one -one preview but if you're 50 50 or you're more a gamer i would definitely go this full hd 144 hertz okay so now so here's the render times and what you'll see is compared to last generation seventh generation laptops with quad core versus this generation with the hex cores, you'll see that the Aero 15X is over 50% faster than a MacBook Pro 15 inch. So it absolutely smashes that. It's like 15% faster than an Alienware 13 or Razer Blade Pro with a GTX 1060 in it. So 15% faster than them. And it's 22% faster than the XPS 15 with a GTX 1050 in it. So without a doubt, it is faster. Now the extra two cores would help and also having a more powerful graphics card. But I'd say the cores are the main reason for that. The difference between a 1060 and a 1070, it is the two extra cores you get in the eighth generation that do give you those faster renders and i'm willing to bet that windows will have some updates some patches and intel will update the micro code on these eighth generation cpus and i think in three months time they'll even perform better and also remember it's single channel dual channel memory in here it'll be even faster again so on render times if that's really important for you it is faster than pretty much all the seventh generation laptops so let's see how it performs in the timeline which is more important to me than render 
the times. Now this is a 4K project, it has color corrections. That's what this pink or purple thing is here. That's a adjustment layer with color correction. That's the video files here. Look up here, when you see drop frames, you will see this green light turn to yellow. So I do have the fan on gamer mode, so it will be a little bit louder than if you set it to silent or whatever, but I do want it to perform at its best. So 4K content with color correction, high resolution photos, and a LUT applied, and let's see how it is. Look at that, just plow through that. The light is green. High resolution photos, it'll go through, no problems. I'll get to the high resolution. Yeah, it's going through high resolution photos, which, you know, usually kills laptops. <clears throat> so just trust me on this 4K. It's absolutely going to smash. Scroll in, have a look at it. It's like butter. 4K, it just laughs at it even with color correction everything and this is on full here if you have a look it's on full so even with effects it plays through effects you got to trust me on that too and even four streams of 4k no problems even five streams of 4k it just 4k way too powerful to be choked down by 4k content look at it it's just like butter so we want to do something a bit more challenging now, one thing to know also is this has a UHS-2 SD card reader, which means it can read like SD cards, the fast ones, like 300 megabytes per second. Now, the SD card does stick out a little bit, but you could literally put your project files on that SD card and edit off it. And I'm going to actually test if I can edit 4K content off the SD card. Let's open an 8K project. My desktop cannot play back 8K content, so I'm not expecting a laptop will be handling it. In fact, you'd pretty much have to be insane to try and edit 8K content on a laptop. It wouldn't be the best experience, but let's see how it does. Now, this is red um, footage, so I'll just slide that in there. You can download this from um, Red's website. It's 8K footage. Now, this is on full. There's no way known it's going to play, so... Oh, hello. Whoa. Nah, now it's getting choppy. I will actually put the Intel gadget on too, so you can see what the CPU is doing. I gather it will be running 100%. So as you can see, scrolling through this, it's a bit of a slideshow. It actually does scroll through, it's not too bad. It's actually okay. Let's see if we can do it on half. And look, and yeah, all right, playing it back, no hope. Look at that. <laughs> That's 8K. That'll kill your system. All right, so let's try this, and you can hear the fans too. Let's try this on half. Now, is this scrolling better? Slightly better scrolling, but it's still not great. Let's try and play it. It's actually playing choppy, but it's not too bad. Try again. Oh, Ooh, when it's cached, it actually can. Uh, it's still dropping. Okay. So even at half, forget about it. Okay. Let's go to one quarter. Oh, hello. Oh, just started to drop frames in the end. One quarter. So this is raw footage too. This is not uncompressed. So one quarter, I think one quarter is editable. Look at it. See that? That's nice and smooth now to scroll. That's pretty good. I reckon you could edit raw 8K footage. That's pretty good. A quarter. That's, that's like phenomenal for a laptop, really. That's awesome. That is raw footage. Now, usually if you have 8K, uh, footage you would uncompress it. So this is the same 8k footage, but it's uncompressed So this is converted to Cineform, you know Mac people would convert it to ProRes and this is what Final Cut does like Final Cut renders your stuff out to ProRes in the background. I've done this manually here, but I've converted it to Cineform. So this is 8k footage It still should not be able to play it at full even though it is uncompressed um, 
because it's still 8K footage at the end of the day. So that scrolling seems pretty good. That seems like the scrolling we were getting on quarter on the raw footage. So let's see if we can play it. Well, it starts to play it in the end, but it just chokes down a little bit at the start. Okay. And starts to flow. Starts to play it a little bit better. Yep, at the end it starts to play it a little bit. So still at full, you cannot do it. Now, a big beefy system like desktop system would usually be able to edit 8K footage at half. So we'll try this at half. Okay. And as you can see, straight away at half. Now, this is very editable. This is smooth playback here. Look, I can scroll through this nicely. It seems pretty smooth. This is 8K footage on a laptop. That just blows my mind. Now, let's see. Okay. It plays through. Oh, my God. All right. There you go. At half, uncompressed, you can edit 8K footage at half on a laptop, this Aero 15X. This is very smooth 8K footage that's just unheard of on a laptop. That's unbelievable. So there you have it. <laughs> the Aero 15 can edit 8K footage. And this is very editable. Look at it. It's nice and smooth at half. Usually to get this sort of performance, you would need a desktop. So this really nearly has desktop performance there. So I get asked a lot to compare this Aero 15 to the MSI GS65, which I'm in the process of trying to make happen. If you actually look at Linus Tech Tips review of the GS65, you'll see that in that video, when he renders video in Premiere Pro, it actually throttles. If that's typical of the GS65, well, that's a non-starter for me personally. So hopefully that was just a bad unit, but we'll soon find out. I'll try and make a shootout happen. All right, all right, all right. Now let's do something stupid, right? Something silly. So this is an SD card. It's about 150 megabytes per second, read and write. This Premiere Pro project, as you can see here, D drive, it is in fact the D drive. And that is where this project is. It's on the D drive here, D drive. So I'm actually running this project off the SD card. So let's see if we can actually play back this content. It's on half. All right, let's go to full. And remember, you can get up to 300 megabytes per second uh, SD cards. This is only 150, so it's half the speed of the fastest ones you can get, so. Oh my God, you know what this means? You know what this means? Ah, oh, it's such a great day today. This means, as you can see, it plays it back at full, full color correction, light applied, 4K content, plays it back, no problems. Let's have a scroll through. And as you can see, nice and smooth. This means I don't have to carry an external SSD around with me because if you don't know, having your project files on the same drive that your Windows is installed on is suboptimal. You're gonna get much better performance if you have your project files on another drive. Now this has two M.2 drives in it, so you can in fact have two M.2s in there, one for your Windows, one for your projects. But if you don't wanna do that and you just wanna put it on your SD card, as long as it's a fast SD card, this is 150 megabytes per second. If you have a faster one, 300 megabytes per second, you'll be able to edit 4K off the card instead of carrying around like a stupid cumbersome like external ssd with a bloody cord i know it does stick out a bit but still it's much better than using a um, ssd like external ssd just you know i'm in the euphoria of the moment here but for video editing content creation this is a cracking device and yeah i'm gonna have to see what the other laptops are like but so far this is like 
tick in every box all right so this is still running off the sd card slot thanks for watching this guys give me a thumbs up if you appreciate this video why not subscribe if you're new around here i'd like to thank you for watching and until next time guys tally ho